So in your area, was the gang thing heavy at that point? Definitely. But to be fair, then you started kind of going hard at Nipsey. You said that there's a gay tape and shit like that. Yo, Vlad, one thing you better not never do is question what come out of my mouth. OG, there's an individual named WAC 100 who's made several inflammatory comments about Nip and his overall legacy. What do you think of individuals attacking Nip's character? When a human being acts like scum, it's not too much to think about, you know, other than people who are scum, they're opportunists. Every gang in L.A. is talking about WAC 100 and it's not good news for him. You might wonder, who's WAC 100 and why are his days numbered? Well, let's break it down. WAC 100 is a big name in the streets, known for his connections with various gangs and his controversial ways. But lately, things have been heating up. Rumors are swirling that he's been crossing too many lines, stepping on too many toes. When a human being acts like scum, it's not too much to think about, you know, other than people who are scum, they're opportunists. See, in the gang world, loyalty is everything. But WAC 100's actions have been raising eyebrows and making people question where his loyalties truly lie. Some say he's been playing both sides, trying to profit off everyone while betraying those who trust him. And when you play with fire, you're bound to get burned. Every gang in L.A. is now allegedly whispering about WAC 100's downfall, predicting that his time is running out. They say karma's catching up to him, and soon enough, he'll pay the price for his double-dealing ways. But why? It's like watching a ticking time bomb, waiting for the explosion. From Compton to South Central, the word on the street is clear. It looks like WAC 100's reign is about to come crashing down. Imagine a guy from the streets, tough as nails, with a life that reads like a Hollywood movie. That's WAC 100. He grew up in California, but his childhood wasn't easy. His parents struggled with addiction, and his brothers ended up behind bars. With school taking a back seat, WAC dove headfirst into the gang life of Los Angeles. He ran with the Pew Bloods, earning a reputation that made even the toughest guys step aside. But Wack didn't stop there. He hustled his way into the music scene, starting as security for big names like Sue Knight. Learning the ropes, he climbed the ladder until he became the CEO of Fifth Amendment Entertainment, calling the shots for artists like The Game and Ray J. He's a big deal in the music world, no doubt about it. Yet, Wack's past is never far behind. People talk about his ties to the Blood Gang like it's the only thing that matters. He's not afraid to ruffle feathers or start drama, making headlines wherever he goes. Some say he's got a knack for stirring the pot, while others call him downright dangerous. But there's more to Wack than meets the eye. Behind the tough exterior lies a story of struggle and survival. They say his nickname, Wack, came from a haunting memory of watching someone take their own life. It's a reminder of the darkness he's seen, the things that shaped him into who he is today. First time I seen her, I wouldn't even call it a probably a I... Despite the chaos, Wack found a new stage on social media, especially on Clubhouse. It's where he lets loose, sharing his thoughts unfiltered. Some call him a provocateur, others a truth teller. Either way, he's not afraid to speak his mind, even if it means making enemies along the way. At first, Wack just wanted to share his thoughts like everyone else. But then, bam. Suddenly, he's smack dab in the middle of the spotlight with all eyes on him. He didn't shy away, though. Nope. He dove right in, loving the way social media let him connect with tons of people in an instant. But with all that attention came trouble. Big trouble. And it's not like the drama stayed online. Nope. It spilled out into the real world, too. Wack got into it with YG over some gang stuff, and things got nasty fast. It was previously reported on WAC 100 calling out certain rappers for lying about previous gang ties and tying YG into the aforementioned category. YG and WAC 100 clashed via Instagram after the latter called out rappers for faking gang affiliations. 
Over on Wack's page, he shared a text image where he called out rappers who say they're about that street life, but really they're just manufactured wannabes. Wack's original post set things off with a subliminal diss. One thing I can respect is this. Blueface came into this rap game crippin', he wrote. The game came into it, Peru and Mozzie came into it, blood and some of you ninjas was wearing skinny jeans and dancing without a gang, slogan coming out your mouth until you got enough money to buy a set. He also included a challenge in the caption. Wish a ninja would say a word. I'll embarrass the F out of ninja playing with me, he declared. Enough is enough. If it's on, let it be on. The two got into it over IG with YG penning to whack. You shoulda eyed me big gangsta og Peru godfather, the rapper wrote. Wack fired back. I you on your own post, little ninja. You the little ninja gone always be a little ninja, Mr. Toot It and Boot. It wasn't a gang sign in the video, all skinny jeans. The words described you, that's why you responded you knew it was you. Shoe fit wear it, ninja. The controversial manager also shared a photo of YG, a blood allegedly throwing up a different set's gang sign. First time I seen her, I wouldn't even call her the I'd be like, I'd be 11, 12 years old. All I know is that ain't a Peru set you're throwing up, and I'm not gone put you off on the Figura or Dina boys. You're a lil ninja. I always been the 818, Wack wrote in a post that's since been removed from Instagram. He added another comment that was a stream of laughing emojis. And now reports by OnSmash indicate that Blueface's manager is standing by his claims. Then there's his ongoing feud with Charleston White, which got personal real quick. It's like these guys couldn't even stand to be in the same room without things getting heated. Their issues originated when Charleston White criticized the game over misconduct claims. Wack hit back by leaking audio of White admitting to assaulting women in his past. Tensions lingered before resurfacing in 2022. A video rant by White saw him aggressively questioning how Wack 100 uncovers all the gay secrets to spark salacious rumors in hip-hop. White openly pondered, How the F does Wack 100 get all the gay secrets? White is seen screaming into his phone in a recent video clip. Who is trusting the straight NG gay with the gay vault? How he get the gay vault secrets? He know about Nipsey Hussle sucking Say, how does this NGGA WAC 100 get everybody's secrets about White then brought WAC's into question, asking, What punk he laying with? What punk whispered in his ear all the punk secrets? Cause say, homie, can't no straight and gay call another straight and gay gay. It take a punk, don't it? Get all the gay secrets. How the f Wack 100 get all the gay secrets? How? Who is trusting the, the straight with the gay vault? It's the hustle. He know about this one. Say, how does this Wack 100 get everybody's secrets by day? One of the biggest messes Wack found himself in started with him dissing the late rapper Nipsey Hussle. People were furious. Things got so heated that it even turned physical at a festival. Wack's reputation took a big hit, and it showed how words online can lead to real fights and real damage. But to be fair, then you started kind of going hard at Nipsey. You said that there's a gay tape and like that. Only because of me that the damn tape still ain't came out to date. But anybody want to challenge me? It all started when WAC 100, known for his inflammatory remarks, disrespected the memory of the unalived L.A. rapper Nipsey Hussle in interviews back in 2019. WAC didn't hold back denying Nipsey's legend status and even seeming to defend his alleged k -er, Eric Holder, under gangbanging rules. His words ignited public outrage. Though WAC initially apologized, he later doubled down on a podcast questioning Nipsey's status as a legend. He argued, he didn't die an A-list artist. Let's be real. He did not die an A-list artist. Let's be real. Y'all talking about he was a legend. If he was a legend, why y'all didn't treat him like that Why he was here? These disrespectful comments didn't go unnoticed. Many saw them as a direct attack on Nipsey's legacy. Months later, tensions boiled over backstage at a festival when Nipsey's bodyguard, Drock, unleashed a sudden attack on Wack 
landing multiple punches to his face before security intervened. A viral video captured the fury of the moment, showing Wack restrained from retaliating against Jirak. Despite subsequent apologies, Wack's provocative remarks had already done their damage. His challenge to Nipsey Hussle's legacy had triggered violence, leaving scars on both sides. Given Wack's fearsome reputation, Drock likely faced severe reprisals for his audacious assault. The clash cast a dark shadow on Wack 100's public image, reminding us of the combustible nature of the hip-hop industry. Then there was this whole drama with Blueface and his baby mama, Chan Rock. It started with worries about their kid's health, but it quickly spiraled into a nasty fight online. Wack didn't help matters by sharing private messages that made things even messier. Blueface claims their child has a hernia, causing Wack 100 to worry and suggest hospitalization. But here's where things go from zero to a hundred real quick. Christian Rock, fiercely protective of her son, takes offense at Wack's comments, especially after Blueface shares explicit photos of their child online. In a heated exchange, she labels Wack and Blueface as gay, stirring up even more tension. Wack fires back with a social media warning, threatening to spill some serious tea if they keep up with the accusations. Then comes the music showdown. Christian Rock teams up with Lil Mao, and they don't hold back in their lyrics. Rock takes aim at Blueface, while Mao throws shade at Wack, hinting at his rumored past. But wait, it gets darker. Wack drops a bombshell, sharing alleged screenshots of Christian Rock scheming with someone from Baltimore to harm Blueface. The messages suggest some serious foul play, with Rock allegedly providing an address. Wack paints Rock as a clout chaser with no boundaries, accusing her of trying to set up Blueface before. Words on the street is Wack spilled more tea, revealing he saw Rock's texts while on the set of Blue Girls Club. Allegedly, Rock was planning to rob Blueface. Wack vents his frustration, calling Rock a monster and questioning those who support her. As the drama unfolds, neither Blueface nor Rock has responded to the bombshell screenshots. Blueface seems to brush it off, saying he doesn't need to address anyone who's not important to him. The question remains, who's really at fault here? Former heavyweight champion Mike Tyson found himself in a fierce brawl during a podcast recording. The heated exchange erupted over comments made by the other person, Wack, about Tupac's sexuality. Wack had caused an uproar on Instagram by sharing questionable photos of Tupac in bed with another man, which many believed were fake and aimed at tarnishing Tupac's legacy. Tyson, who was close friends with Tupac, took offense to Wack's remarks as a serious form of disrespect. When the two met for Tyson's podcast, things quickly escalated into a physical altercation. While photos from before the fight show them calm, leaked audio revealed that Wack admitted to throwing the first punch. Tyson, known for his fierce fighting skills, unleashed his fury in response. The incident highlights Tyson's reputation as one of boxing's most formidable fighters, even outside the ring. Despite Wack seemingly acknowledging his defeat with images of pain medication, Tyson remained composed, sharing only a photo with Tupac and a quote about the importance of being prepared for a fight. This clash serves as a reminder that even celebrity status cannot protect you from Tyson's wrath when it comes to disrespecting those close to him. But maybe the craziest thing Wack did was sit down for a chat with Takashi 6 x 99 a guy known for snitching. People in the industry went nuts. They said Wack was being disloyal and betraying his friends, but Wack didn't back down. Nope, he stood tall and said he didn't care what anyone else thought. Through it all, though, Wack 100 hasn't backed down. He's like a rock in a storm, standing firm no matter what. Whether he's defending his choices or going toe-to-toe -to -toe with old friends, he's not afraid to speak his mind. The drama between Wack 100 and Meek Mill is like watching a roller coaster ride with no end in sight. These guys have been at each other's throats for years, and it all started with some serious bad blood. 
Back in 2016, Wack stepped in to squash a beef between Meek and another rapper called The Game. Things got heated when Wack said some stuff about the late rapper Nipsey Hussle that Meek didn't like. Then in 2021, Wack got involved in Meek's feud with rapper 6699. Meek wasn't having any of it, calling Wack out online and daring him to meet face to face. The tension kept building, with Wack even threatening violence if he ran into Meek at an awards show. And when asked if they buried the hatchet, Wack said, No way. These two are like oil and water. They just don't mix. But the drama doesn't stop there. Wack also has beef with Suge Knight, the guy behind Death Row Records back in the day. Suge's reputation for being a tough guy precedes him, and Wack didn't hold back, accusing Suge of steering up trouble between rappers Snoop Dogg and Skix Ini. Suge wasn't about to take that lying down, firing back at Wack from behind bars. He even threatened to pay Wack a visit once he got out of prison. Now, that's some serious talk. But just when you think things are about to explode, they take an unexpected turn. Wack suddenly backs off, saying he and Suga have some mutual connections that outweigh their beef. It's like a ceasefire in the middle of a war zone. Still, you can't shake the feeling that this truce is hanging by a thread. With these guys, anything could set them off again. It's like they're walking on eggshells waiting for the next explosion. So, will Wack and Meek ever bury the hatchet? Will Suga and Wack ever settle their score? Only time will tell. But one thing's for sure, it's going to be one heck of a ride. And that's all for today. Until next time, peace out.